Hello everyone. Uh, I welcome you all in this video. Uh, this video is basically the continuation of uh, what we discussed in the last video, that is uh, EPC process, evaporative pattern casting process, uh, in which we discussed about uh, the basic techniques, uh, means what this EPC process is, what are the materials that we are using, and what are the steps that is involved in this uh, EPC process while casting, okay? In this video, uh, we are going to discuss about the we are going to discuss about the process parameters that is affiliated with this EPC process. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so uh, these are the process parameters. Uh, like first one is uh, pattern in EPC process, uh, in which we'll discuss about the different types of the material that we are using for the uh, pattern that we are using for this EPC process. Uh, pattern properties, what are the properties that is affiliated with this pattern? Uh, pattern coating, uh, what means there is a, a refractive materials that we are using for the coating purpose, but what are the other techniques that is available through which coating can be possible, okay? <laughs> Next is structure and thermal degradation of the form. Uh, it is structure involved like uh, a chemical structure and uh, chemical structure and what is the product when this uh, pattern material which is buried inside this uh, sand mold so uh, when it is uh, con when it has a contact with the molten material what the structure changes with whether there what is the possibility of structure changes thermal degradations uh, that uh, there is a limit of there is a limit of temperatures so uh, if it goes beyond that <clears throat> when it will be minimum of that so that we will study in this part uh, molding practices, how uh, EPC process, uh, the pattern that we are using. Okay, so how uh, that can be, uh, we can machine that uh, pattern, okay. Uh, vibrations, uh, this vibrations, which is affiliated with the sand particles, which is surrounded, uh, which is surrounded the uh, pattern, okay. Characteristic uh, behavior of molten metal in the prepared molds. So in which we'll discuss about the uh, gating system, Okay, uh, means gating system because uh, there are uh, different types, uh, means there are different uh, channels. Okay, so that is uh, how, when this uh, molten metal uh, flow through that, uh, the uh, uh, flow through these uh, channels, okay, and when it will reach exactly near to the gate entry, uh, what is the effect of these uh, parameters? Uh, okay, uh, pouring temperature, at which the molten metal is poured and the gating system uh, means whatever the channels that we are using how we can use uh, for the pressurized uh, means non ferrous materials and the ferrous materials okay so these are the things that we are going to discuss in this video so let's start with the first one which is a uh, pattern in the epc so first is uh, like uh, we discussed in the last video that uh, we are using uh, polystyrene uh, polyacrylic alkaline carbonate and PMMA, okay? So uh, these materials we are using and among these uh, polystyrene that we are using for the non-ferrous materials, means while casting of the non-ferrous materials, the pattern is made up of the PS, polystyrene, and while casting of this ferrous materials, uh, we are making these patterns of this uh, PSC and PMMA, okay? Now, uh, we are, one of the reason is uh, we are using this PSC, PMMA, or PS because it's lightweight okay due to its lightweight also uh, temperature is one of the uh, parameter but uh, basic need is uh, we are using it because of its lightweight okay so uh, as we discussed uh, while uh, discussing in the last uh, there are steps uh, of the cpc process that uh, we are just fixing at the end of the gate okay through this the molten metal entered into the uh, pattern okay mold cavity so we are just fixing it we are not uh, providing any other external supply, uh, means external agency to hold this uh, pattern at the at the gate, okay, at the end of the gate. So this is one of the reason. Uh, another uh, in this pattern is uh, basically uh, the pattern, uh, the polystyrene uh, that we are using for the non-ferrous metal or this PSE or PMMA we are using for the ferrous material. These has uh, the different, uh, means there is a differences of this density values, okay? So these density values causes the casting defects. Now this, how this will causes, because uh, because uh, 
if uh, the polystyrene mean, means when this pattern is formed pattern itself is formed that time uh, generally uh, while uh, casting of these uh, these patterns okay while casting of these patterns uh, these uh, low density particles are uh, are travel in one side and uh, high density particles are uh, travel in other side so there will be like there will be differences okay low density particles is different side other other side is high density particle so when the molten metal is flow it will try to gain uh, it will try to regain the surface of this uh, low density particle first then it will move towards the high density particle so we have to keep in mind that uh, the density values uh, of this uh, there we need a consistency in the density values because it should be mixed okay so the consistency is required if the consist why this consistency is required because at the end we need a consistent in the mechanical and microstructure property microstructure properties of casting okay so these are the two things that we uh, needed uh, so that's why we need this uh, consistent uh, values of the densities uh, while uh, using a particular pattern for this casting okay next is pattern properties now uh, is uh, we discuss about that uh, pattern is like uh, pattern properties so pattern properties uh, this as we discussed in the last that uh, here that uh, pattern pro these diff densities are different values okay if they have a different values then definitely they will cause a defects casting defects this is happen because of the non uniformity in the pattern density only as as we discussed that low density particles are separated on the other side there is a, a high density particle so because of that uh, this uh, there will be a non uniformity in the uh, pattern densities now we are talking about these pattern densities so uh, this will basically affect the flow of the molten material i can write over here the flow of molten material molten metal uh, which is expected to displace which is expected to displace where where it will reach it will reach to the uh, molten material where it will reach it will reach to the pattern so uh, it will which is expected to displace the pattern materials pattern materials which is buried under the sand mold sand mold means buried means uh, inside the sand molds means uh, as we uh, know that compacting of the sand slab that we are using the compacting of the sand in which first we are uh, uh, keeping this uh, coated uh, coated uh, cluster assembly then we are uh, compacting the sands okay we are filling the sands and we are compacting it so surrounded to this pattern there is a sand mold is there okay so that that's only we are i'm talking about so uh, because of uh, that the flow of the molten material uh, um, which expected to displace the pattern material which is buried under the uh, or below the which is surrounded by the sand mold okay if this this instead of uh, because of these reasons uh, instead of uniform flow the metal tends to flow to low density area that we discuss that material uh, molten material will always try to cover the areas which is uh, which has uh, the low density means in the pattern side if you are talking about the pattern material then it will cover the low density areas low density areas first okay means it will not cover the high densities first the when the molten material is rich uh, to this uh, to the uh, inside the mold cavity it will try to contact first the low density particle of the <laughs> pattern okay so that will causes the folds and form inclusions which are the casting defects okay so please keep in mind uh, if there is a, a non uniformity in the uh, densities then uh, there will be the uh, inclusions uh, why this inclusions because of these reasons okay so let's move next
pattern coating pattern coating is uh, as we discussed in the last uh, video that for the pattern coating here uh, we are using only the refractory materials okay uh, we are not uh, make uh, some maximum time we are using uh, only the refractory materials means here it's mentioned only the refractory materials but uh, sometimes we are using uh, the mixture of the refractory materials along with the binders now these binders are is again uh, very less in percentage like 5% of the total okay so why we are using less percentage of the uh, binders because uh, when it because it's a mixture of refractory materials and the binders so binders is try to try to cover the surface of the pattern this is a pattern okay and it, when it will uh, when it will be a mixture of refract along with the refractory materials it will cover all surface it will not leave a single part of the uh, surface uh, of the pattern means outside periphery so <laughs> what will happen when uh, there will be enter of the molten material uh, while, uh, while filling the molten material when it will enter it will try to uh, means uh, first it will come in contact with the beads of this uh, single beads of this uh, it will means one by one it will come uh, to the number of beads of the pattern of the forms but uh, when it will uh, remove the uh, when it will come molten material will come in contact with these beads they will uh, first convert into the liquid form and immediately they convert into the uh, gaseous form or air form okay so when they will convert the gaseous form is the pressure temperature is very high the pressure is also here it's not uh, atmospheric pressure because there was not a single area which was left okay so the pressure is also increases now the pressure is uh, increases they will try to evacuate the uh, this mold cavity okay or the uh, surfaces which is covered by the pattern okay pattern material so when they will try to escape if they will not get uh, any vent means any vent area if they will not get any vent area uh, surrounded by uh, which around this uh, pattern then uh, they will uh, they will uh, they will means uh, they will not escape okay if they will not escape they will uh, form a cavity because it will be it will become a mixture means like porosities what is porosities it's basically inside the material there is a uh, air bubbles or air particles are uh, uh, means uh, uh, become a part of the casting so that there may be a chance so we want that there should not be uh, there should not be such like uh, escalation is not allowed we are allowing escalation that's why we are uh, on the minimum percentage we are using these binders rest of the time we are using the refractory materials only okay so this is the reason of uh, we have we have to use less percentage of the binders or we, there is no need to use okay next is the types of the coating methods the types of the coating methods includes that uh, there are uh, three uh, three methods okay so in the last video uh, when we discussed like this uh, in which uh, we discuss about this is the this was a flask and in which the refractive materials was filled and then we are dipping the cluster assembly we are dipping the cluster assembly so why uh, dipping the cluster assembly this uh, whatever the refractory materials are there means we are keeping it cluster, cluster assembly for some time and uh, so that uh, the there will be a uniformity of the refractory materials which is covered the surface uh, surface of the uh, surface of this uh, pattern so uh, but what will happen that is we have to bring it out okay as we have to bring it out this uh, cluster assembly so when we'll uh, bring it out that time we have to shake it because excessive amount of the uh, refractive materials are over the surface of this uh, over the surface of the pattern so when we'll shake it or uh, we'll just uh, means uh, either we'll just turn it uh, to uh, rotate and turn it to just remove the excessive amount of the refractive particles that time uh, whatever the uniformity of the refractory materials over the uh, pattern surface that is gone okay there will not be uniformity so uh, by the way we are all maximum time we are using this uh, dip uh, this only uh, this is a uh, dipping basically okay uh, so in which uh, somewhere it is like a uniformity uh, in the thickness but somewhere it is not not uniforms okay so throughout if we talk about them this is uh, somehow it's a good method but not that much okay next we talk about this swabbing swabbing is basically uh, in which we are using the brush 
Okay, so if you will use the brush, then if this is a pattern and we, you are applying the coating through the brush, then there will be a peak and valley. Okay, there will be like, because wherever the brush, uh, one of the particle, uh, sorry, uh, one of the element of this brush will come in contact, that time there will be a peak. Otherwise, next to it, there is a valley. Again, there is a peak, valley, peak, valley, peak, valley, something like that, okay? So there will not be a uniform. So that's why we uh, completely avoid this uh, swabbing process. Next is a spring. It's a very good method. And uh, whatever the uh, uh, surface uh, thickness of the coating that we are getting, that is the most efficient. Means most efficient method to provide the uniformity okay uniformity but as uh, it's an expensive process because uh, like here what we will do is here we are completely uh, dipping uh, this assembly so all the patterns are coated at the same time but in this spraying process uh, we have to coat one by one Okay, so we have to coat one by one, as well as if we are using any intricate shapes, means these kind of intricate shapes we are uh, we are using, means we are casting, then uh, this is the pattern. And now we have to spray it. So we have to move in all the directions, means a sprayer, a person who is doing these spraying, he has to rotate 360 degree and cover all the dimensions, okay? Cover all the directions. So uh, this is, we have to keep in mind. So on an average, we are using the dipping, uh, which is uh, somehow it's a good. Okay. Uh, next is uh, the structure and the thermal degradation. As we said that uh, structure, now when we talk about the chemical structure of, chemical structure of uh, the polystyrene, uh, simply we are talking about the polystyrene. So polystyrene includes the carbon, and the hydrogen atoms along with along with benzene ring means this is basically a single styrene this is not a polystyrene this is a single styrene if we need the uh, polystyrene then we have to polymerize this means there will be the number of particles okay number of benzene rings along with the carbon and hydrogen atoms now this basically calls it as a hydrocarbons we call it as a hydrocarbons, okay? So if you will look at the figure, this is the figure. Okay, this is the figure. Now here, uh, this is a benzene ring, okay? Uh, This is the uh, benzene ring, okay, and uh, which is connected with the uh, carbon and hydrogen, okay, hydrogen atoms. So this is a complete uh, single styrene, okay. Now for the polymerization, we are uh, using the number of, uh, this is a single styrene, this is the next styrene, this is the next styrene. So now these are connected in a, this connected with the each other. So they are making the polystyrene, okay. Now uh, when we talk about the, When we talk about the pyrolysis product, when we talk about the pyrolysis product, then uh, when this molten material, sorry, when this molten material uh, is uh, through this side, uh, basically this is this is the pattern, okay. Now you can see these are the beads, okay? These are the beads, these are the beads, okay? Uh, through this side, we are filling the molten material uh, through this cross-sectional area. Uh, this is uh, this is basically the coating, uh, means coating in uh, refractory materials or outside that there is a sand particles, okay? So uh, as the molten material is come uh, initially entered, okay? Now here, this uh, zone is kinetic zone where uh, basically the liquid materials are there, means molten material is there, as well as uh, whatever the uh, material that is uh, beads material, which is initially converted into the liquid form, then it is evaporated immediately. So that everything is coming uh, in this region only, okay? So we, uh, 
so uh, if you uh, see uh, this then degradation of the uh, liquid into the gases or uh, from uh, this because when it is converted into the liquid metal immediately because it's not a single bead there are number of number of beads are there okay so they will try to uh, find out because liquid uh, liquid is basically uh, it's not like a gas uh, it's a uh, liquid is basically initially it's it cannot be hold itself uh, inside the gravity means on a space it cannot hold itself okay because of gravity it will try to uh, cover the spare uh, means it will try to reach to the surface okay or the inside periphery of this uh, uh, mold cavity okay so when it will try to reach to the surface uh, means now we are talk which is this now we can talk about that this is a cylindrical surface so it will try to reach over here liquid material okay when as i said that liquid material which is immediately convert into the gas because of the evaporation they will try to escape from here okay so this is a degradation of the liquid into the gases okay okay here it's mentioned that uh, liquid uh, some amount of the liquid is also because those who is not evaporated because of the high density of the pattern materials they will try to uh, pour into the coating uh, in the refractory coatings okay then uh, this is a kinetic zone where the molten material is there uh, liquid forms of the uh, liquid forms uh, uh, which is converted through the pores that is also there and uh, the evaporation which is takes place through these sides in if you are talking about these zones okay so now you can see that air and the gas out okay gas guts that is uh, means basically that is out okay so this is a coating and uh, this is a pattern basically okay now uh, when this uh, when this uh, we talk about this uh, uh when we talk about that uh just a minute okay so when we talk about uh when this molten material will come in contact with this uh this pattern okay uh there is a means a, when it will come in contact because it's a very high temperature and uh, here it's like uh, 430 degrees centigrade is the boiling point of this uh, polystyrene so it will uh, when it will uh, the temperature is reaches means increases this poly patterns is uh, try to uh, means it's try to retain its polymer structure it's try to retain retain its polymer structure what polymer structure that we seen last time in the last last figure okay that is benzene and the uh, benzene and the carbon and hydrogen so hydrocarbons is there so that there is a when the polymerization there are number of benzene rings and number of carbon atoms and hydrogen atoms so uh, when there is a rise in temperature they will uh, it the the pattern pattern material is try to uh, retain its structure but set up to a certain limit certain limit of temperature so uh, the temperature uh, when uh, where it will try to uh, means uh, means without any changes until the temperature reaches we call this temperature is this glass transition time temperature this is tg first is it is the temperature below that the polymer retain its structure second is the temperature at which the molecules begins to vibrate okay because now the melting is start so melting is start it will try to convert it into the liquid materials okay so means here from solid to liquid i'm talking about so it will try to convert into the solid to the liquid material so it start vibrating so because of this vibrations immediately the temperature is rise above the tg and polymer uh, which is as i said that uh, polymers uh, materials that is start vibrating uh, and the density uh, of this is also reduces because uh, as you, now you can see that uh, means when it is converting into solid to the liquid material the density should increases but as i said that immediately it is try to convert it is converted into the uh, gases form okay so because of that that uh, on behalf of increasing the viscosity the viscosity try to decrease okay so this is about the gla glass transition temperature there are uh, two things that we discuss in the tg that is it's below this it's try to retain its structure and above to it it is the molecules uh, of the uh, 
the molecule of the pattern start vibrating okay means try to convert from solid to the liquid phase okay so next is next is molding practices uh, this is not that much important because uh, i discussed last time that uh, we are using these e uh, the pattern material that we are using in the epc that is polystyrene pac and pmma so that has a very low strength because of the lightweight we are using but another that is because of uh, the low strength also we are using so low because of the low strength simply we can cut uh, these uh, means whatever the indicate shapes are there we can simply cut uh, through the cutters and the knives okay so that's that's not a uh, means machining of the pattern is not a big task okay so that's why uh, there is no much to discuss in this uh, molding practices it's very easy next is vibrations so vibrations now uh, this vibration is uh, now here the vibration i'm talking about this vibration is basically the vibration of the sand molds sand particles okay sand particles which is surrounded if this is a pattern over that there is a coating and after that we are uh, using the compact sand okay which is completely compacted <laughs> okay so we are talking about the sand particles when there is a rise in temperature and uh, they will uh, when it is converted this pattern material is converted into the liquid forms uh, means uh, which is uh, converted into the liquid form and converted in, uh, to the gases to the evaporation so what happened that whatever the area that has has been evaporated through the pattern that is covered by the molten material now when it is convert, converted by the molten material uh, whatever the uh, escapement of these gases are through these cross sections only okay through the uh, through which um, means uh, through which uh, not through which the molten material is coming but rest of the area it will try to escape okay so when it will try to escape and as i said that uh, it's a liquid material so first it will try to uh, capture the surface uh, peripheral peripheral surface okay of the uh, mold cavity so what will happen this liquid material when this liquid material rich over here i'm using other plane so when it will uh, this will try this liquid will try to reach over here uh, now in each, in, immediately this will uh, try to uh, when it it is evaporated it will try to escape the <clears throat> escape this surface okay escape this mold cavity so that time what will happen that uh, these uh, sand molds uh, sand particles start vibrating okay these start vibrating now uh, when this start vibrating this is affect uh, the um, the structure means uh, immediately when this uh, molten material is reaching uh, whatever the molten material that has been uh, covered uh, that has been taken uh, uh, that has been uh, means uh, restored at some place or that has been covered some area they will try to solidify it okay whatever the molten material that has been entered they will try to solidify it as is uh, because of this vibration there is a effect means this vibration of this vibration of this sand particles sorry affects the solidified structure okay so it will affect the solidified structure now how it will affect because uh, vibrations when we are talking about the vibrations there are three things first is frequency uh, amplitude and intensity that is force intensity means force exerted by this uh, sand particles so when we talk about the frequency that is the range of 10 to 60 hertz okay we talk about the amplitudes then it is 0.11 to 0.45 mm and we talk about the intensity of the force then it is from 80 to 12000 newton okay so this intensity is very high so these fact these parameters these parameters affects the shape 
शेप डायरेक्शन ऑफ फ्लो ऑफ मोल्टन मटीरियल मोल्टन मेटल दैट अफेक्ट ओके सो दिस अफेक्ट द डायरेक्शन ऑफ द फ्लो ऑफ द मोल्टन मटीरियल एज वेल एज द शेप दैट इज कवर्ड बाई दिस मोल्टन मटीरियल सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट means if uh, these parameters are not in the specified range then they may cause a casting defects okay so we have to keep in mind while uh, choosing the uh, we have to keep in mind these parameters okay while uh, while doing this epc process okay so that's why it is important and uh, next is the uh, characteristic behavior characteristic uh, behavior of molten metal in uh, poured in prepared molds okay so uh, characteristic behavior uh, of the molten metals now this molten metal is filling through the gating system gating system in the basing casting we have discussed that uh, while designing this gating system we have to keep in mind that there will be no turbulence there will be no turbulence lens okay so uh, uh, so while designing this gate system we have to keep in mind that uh, that shape of the sprue should be taper or uh, the parameters like uh, temperature pressure densities uh, because it's a variable okay so we have to keep in mind uh, the shape of the turbulence uh, sprue accordingly as well as uh, because uh, when there uh, if this is a pattern then uh, there is a like there is a coating is there okay so uh, if uh, we are using the excessive amount of the binders then uh, whatever the beads that is converted into liquid and uh, gases they will try to escape so initially they will not get a, a place through which that uh, escape of these gases can be takes place why because that is covered everything is covered by the binders okay now if there is no space means there is no wind then they will try uh, they will try to hit out with a big pressure okay because there is no escapement so they will try to hit out a uh, uh, means a big pressure okay so that will basically uh, that is uh, that is uh, that causes a casting defect because uh, if these gases will not vent out then it will uh, itself uh, be in the cast mold molten material or in the casting itself it will uh, become a part of that okay so that will causes a casting defect but these things uh, as we discussed the last figure uh, because of this uh, if there is a big pressure then uh, these thing everything happen in this zone okay this in this zone okay kinetic zone so there is a possibility that that uh, whatever if they they are not getting through uh, this escapement is not through these areas okay these three surfaces then uh, this material uh, this this should allow this should uh, means uh, give a big pressure uh, to the uh, means inside the mold cavity so because of that uh, these gases become a part of uh, casting okay so that causes the casting defect Okay, so this is uh, this is all uh, from my side in this uh, character characteristic part. Next is uh, pouring temperature. Pouring temperature is uh, like uh, if you are talking about the pouring temperature, then this is like at which we are pouring them uh, into the molten uh, into the pouring basin. Okay, so when we are pouring basin, whatever uh, the temperature, because uh, how many elements we are using? First is pouring basin, then is sprue, then runner, then it is going to the gate, then Through the gate, it is coming to the uh, pattern. Okay, so pouring temperature, which is generally uh, above, basically, it's uh, we are considering it as equivalent to the boiling point, or more than that. So that uh, whatever the molten material that uh, that is uh, filling through the pouring basin, that should not be uh, start solidifying. Uh, means in, in the runner or a sprue itself, or the, uh, through at the gate only, because it will not otherwise. uh when they will choke they will choke the gate areas so we have to keep in mind so there are two approaches first is visual approach uh, through this uh, we we can see the design part and uh, this uh, temperature should be maintained 
above the above the uh, above the melting point temperature so that uh, it whatever the length that is whatever the section that is length of the section that is covered through these uh, individual elements that will also restore and uh, means restore means um, that is covered okay and after that only it start um, uh, means uh, solidified it should the solidification should not be started in between these elements otherwise it will choke and other defects will also cause it so this is the first defect that choking is takes place if it is pouring temperature is not controlled another is uh, another there is uh, like uh, mechanical testings so it uh, a lot of times like uh, if the material is not uh, properly uh, melted means uh, because uh, whatever the elements that we are using very rarely we are getting the pure elements uh, it's a combination of alloys okay so uh, alloys means there are a number of particles okay so every particles has different uh, boiling uh, means melting point temperature accordingly boiling pouring temperatures is maintained so if we will not maintain these things then in the mechanical testing means uh, there will be a, a defects in the tensile strength uh, means variation variation in the tensile strength three percentage elongation hardness or even though we can see in the microstructure as well so we have to keep in mind this pouring temperature this should be greater than uh, the uh, this should be greater than the uh, what we are using for the uh, means not it's not a melting point it's more than that okay next is uh, the gating system uh, by the way we this uh, gating system you have discussed in the uh, in the basic casting because gating system is like uh, if we are because here we are using the non ferrous and the ferrous materials okay now uh, ferrous materials sorry so uh, when we are using the non ferrous material then we use the non pressurized gating system gating system and for the ferrous material there is a pressurized gating system now how we decide this pressurized and non pressurized gating system uh, as per the area ratio now the area ratio means area ratio means uh, the area of the runner area of this screw sorry area of this screw then runner then area of the gating system gate okay so if uh, these areas are like uh, 1 is to 2 is to 2 1 is to 2 is to 3 then it means this is uh, like initially uh, there is a less area than area is increasing so the pressure at the end is uh, not maintained okay so this is like a non pressurized gating system if we are using the areas like 2 is to 2 is to 1 or 4 is to 2 is to 1 3 is to 1 is to 1 then this is like uh, at the end there is a less area and we are filling the uh, means this area initially so uh, in as this is like just half at the gating system so whatever the molten material which is poured through this sprue that will reach equivalent to the through the runner to reach to the gate now when it will reach to the gate because the area is large at the uh, sprue and the runner so more amount of material molten material is passes and reach to the gate now if the area at the uh, gate is less than uh, the rest of the material which is freely coming through this sprue and the runner it will try to uh, force the rest of the material which is filled uh, molten material which is filled over the gate cross sectional area so it, either it, there will be a rise in velocity okay okay so through that it will apply the uh, pressurized force so this is basically the type of the pressurized getting system this is for the non pressurized getting system so we use this for the non ferrous material we use this for the ferrous material okay so uh, this is all from my side uh, in this in this uh, video uh, these are the references that i have taken for uh, to make this uh, ppt the first is uh, kalpak jian and the schemet book and another one is this is a reference through the internet okay so thank you so much guys